In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create the same exact style as material from the game Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe in Blender, or at least my closest um, recreation of the material that is that I can provide to you guys. Uh, it's something really simple that you can do actually in the node editor, which only consists of several nodes. You can apply this to anything, which is what I kind of like about this, and it's something very simple. So without further ado, let's get straight into the tutorial. For this tutorial, I'll be using this Kirby model that I designed myself after a small controversial speed bump from two years ago on Discord. As you can see, all I've done was create a flat shading for the light and shadow behaviors in the material, as well as a dark magenta-ish outline around him that consistently follows the outside no matter where the camera is, just like in the game. And before we get started, just for a reference on the editor panel, I am of course using the EV render engine, and I have only activated screen space reflections panel, as well as adjusted the cube and cascade size in the shadows panel. You can turn on soft shadows if you'd like, but it really doesn't make a difference in the end result. So, so far, I only have Kirby's face texture activated in the material output. If we take a look around him, he has absolutely no shadows casted on his face, and no outline only on his arms and his feet, but I'll leave those there so that we can use those as a reference for us. In the node editor, I already have a material inserted, which only really consists of the texture. You can use whatever you want to follow along. I also have four nodes over here already. The only nodes that are required out of these four are the Tune BSDF shader, as well as the shader to RGB node, which just converts how the light and shadows are convoyed on the model into simple flat colors. You don't have to copy my RGB wheel, it that does nothing really, and hue and saturation node. Just those two are required. Once you have your basic tune shader to RGB set up, we need to locate the details of the shadows casted upon Kirby, or your object. For that, I'll press Shift A on my keyboard and add a math node to connect in front of the shader to RGB node. If we take a look around, Kirby just went completely blank and we see no data. That's because we aren't displaying it properly. If we change the math node's function to subtract, we can see that the shadows are displayed as black, while the light cast upon Kirby is white. Now if we change the function to divide, if we look around, we can see a more softer shadow behavior, which is closer to how the material would react in a normal principal shader. But if we just adjust the value on the math node, we can adjust the strength of the shadow, or how much the node is dividing the black and white data. Next, let's add in a color ramp node after our math node to adjust the blending of our shadow data. If we change the interpolation from linear to constant, and play with the black and white sliders, we can see how this data is displayed through a flat or a constant projection. We're basically telling Blender how we want our colors displayed based on a math function. I provided three different examples on how some of these functions work. By default, it's set to linear but we want the colors to adjust only when we change that value, or that slider. This gives us a flat result. We can set both the color ramp sliders and the math node value according to how strong we want our shadows casted onto Kirby. Now that we have our shadow set, let's change the color of our black shadow to another color. We'll add in another color ramp node in the back of our first one. We'll change the interpolation to constant again, but this time we'll click on the black slider and change the color of our shadow from black to pink, or whatever color you want the shadows to be. I actually have the hex code for the color of the pink shadow that I want to use up here, so I'm just going to copy and paste it into the hex value of the color wheel. You can copy it from the screen, or choose your own color. Now that we have our shadow created, we want to blend the shadow correctly onto the texture of Kirby. Essentially, we want to keep the pink color, but get rid of the white color. And if you've used Photoshop layer blending before, you might have an idea of what we need to do. For this, I'll add in a Mix RGB node, which will allow us to access the same layer blending modes. I'll first make sure that our color ramp node is plugged into the top color input, then plug our texture into the bottom color input. And in that order, since I want the shadows on the top of the texture. Next, we'll change the blend mode from Mix to Multiply, and then crank the factor value all the way to 1. Congrats! You've successfully applied the shadow onto Kirby. You can tweak any of the shadow settings through either the first color ramp node, or preferably the math node. If we take a look around the model, you can see that the shadows are nicely projected onto Kirby. This helps give the look of a 2D character or object while still being in a 3D space. Now all that we're missing is the last 20% of this material, and that is the outline of Kirby's face. This part will be separate from everything we've done above. So let's find another area, and then we'll start by adding a layer weight node. 
What this node does is projects the data of an object's Fresnel and facing properties. The Fresnel is what we need, as it is the property of the amount of reflection based on the angle you are looking at an object. We're also going to ignore the facing output as we don't need that property for this trick. We're now going to add a color ramp node after it, and playing with the sliders allows us to adjust the amount of Fresnel that the object has. What we're trying to do is have our Fresnel of our object be the outline of Kirby. We can further enhance this by changing our interpolation yet again to constant. This, what you'd expect, makes our Fresnel a flat color data. If we take a look around Kirby, he now has a white outline following him on the edges no matter what nor no matter where you look, as a Fresnel effect would on any object. The good news is, we have one more step left, and that's to apply this outline onto our current material setup above. This just means we have to do one more blending. Let's add in our last mix RGB node. However, we're going to be using our Fresnel outline as the blending data factor value rather than the color itself. So I'll plug in the top mix RGB node into our new mix RGB top color input. And lastly, I'll plug in our new color ramp color output into the factor input of our new mix RGB. As you can see, we now have this gray outline around Kirby's face, but now we need to change the color. So let's click on our bottom color input window and change the color to our desired outline color. Whatever you choose on this wheel will be your outline's color. Essentially, I have the outline hex again on the top, so I'm just going to copy and paste it again. Or type it manually because that clearly didn't copy the right hex code. We can now plug our output into the material surface input and we now have a full stylized shader similar to Kirby in Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. If I play around with this rig, you can see that the shadows are properly casted upon Kirby no matter which way I turn him or how I move his bones. And if I adjust the light location, rotation, or strength, the shadows properly behave on Kirby with no problems whatsoever. So to quickly recap on everything we've done, we just set up a simple tune BSDF to shadered RGB node setup, we then added a math node in order to find the data of our shadows, we then use a color ramp node to make those values flat as possible through the constant interpolation. We then change those colors through another color ramp to pink or whatever color you wanted to use. And then we blended both the texture and our setup with a mix RGB node and using the multiply blend. We then made the outline by starting off with our layer weight node to find the data of our Fresnel. Then we used a color ramp to turn that for now into a flat outline. And finally, we used another mix RGB node to connect both setups that we did, along with changing the color of our outline through the bottom color wheel. And there you see it's just a simple setup with only several nodes in order to get this similar stylized looking material for anything in Blender aside from just Kirby. Thank you everybody so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful in any way possible, or if you learned something new, be sure to hit a like on this video so that more people can find this in their recommendations, and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this as I make more material related videos in Blender, and sometimes, occasionally, 3D modeling. I also have a new series ongoing at the time of this video, which relates to um, getting new, or if you're new into 3D, approaching it, and how to get started into it properly. So thank you everyone so much for watching again, and I'll see you guys in the next video.